Hey, good morning, Bridge family. You guys are at home, so it really isn't just Bridge at home. It's Bridge at home only. Today is December 26th. It's our prayer that you had a great 25th and that you're enjoying the 26th. Today, I'm, I'm speaking to an empty room, so I'll be looking as if you were right there, dressed up and ready to go. I'll be talking about today one of the last thoughts on closing up this Hallmark uh, Christmas um, teaching we've had. And I'm talking about Mary today specifically and how the calling came upon her life by Gabriel. Six months after talking to Zechariah and Elizabeth, he comes, Gabriel comes, and he addresses Mary. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm in Luke 1, 28. It's, he comes in and he says, and coming in, he said to her, greetings, uh, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, it's really important. He uses this term favored, and the word favored translates to grace, basically gracious one. Uh, it actually means blessed and highly favored. And you thought that Joseph Prince came up with that. Really, it's in the Bible before Joseph Prince, so, you know, you, you, you can't get credit. You're going to get credit get it to, uh, to, jo to Gabriel. Uh, the favored one. So we have, we have grace starting this whole process. Introduction to her destiny is through grace. Verse 29, but she was very perplexed at this statement and was pondering what kind of greeting this was. Verse 30, and, and the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor, once again, the word grace, with God. Two times in his introduction to Mary, he mentions the word grace. And I think it's really important. What Elizabeth and Zechariah received from Gabriel was an extension of the law. It came in the temple. It came from two people who followed the law strictly. It came from an effort between two human beings following the law, and it created John. And I, I think it's really important to understand John, the product of, I, it, it appears to be, if you look at it, the product of the law of effort is pointing to Jesus, is going to, his whole life, his whole life will be pointing to Jesus' grace. And in John 1.17, it says, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. It's really important to understand that even in the fact that John is doing what he's doing, he's pointing to grace. He's still pointing to Jesus. And the law does exactly that. It points to Jesus. Let's keep going on. Gabriel makes a proclamation, and he says, And behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and shall, you shall name him Jesus. Now, that is, is kind of problematic even in the culture. Normally, when you have a son, you name him after the father. So to name him, to name him Jesus is going to be like, okay, now, that's, that's kind of a little weird. Uh, first of all, i got to explain to Joseph. How am I going to explain to Joseph that I'm pregnant, and it would have been better to say, I'm pregnant, but I'm going to name him Joseph. That might have eased the pain a little bit. But he says, are you going to name him Jesus? And then he says, and he will reign over the house of Jacob. I'm sorry, verse 32. And he'll be great and will be called the son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David. Now, this is a young girl, never seeing an angel, hearing from heaven, this doesn't happen all the time, and she, she's receiving information that she has no context outside of, of prophetic scripture that talked about a Messiah, but there's been 400 years of silence to where this is kind of, kind of a really, this is all brand new. It's almost like, what are you saying to me? So not Joseph, and then she mentions the son of the Most High, and she's thinking, well, that sounds like the son of God. And this is the father of David. And she's thinking to herself, is he talking about like the Messiah? Could that? Because we've been talking about that and hearing about that. But this guy is actually saying that I'm going to be involved. Verse 33. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. That's definitely the Messiah. His kingdom will have no end. So this is, now she's 13, 14, 50 somewhere, and she's hearing this for the first time. An angel shows up. It's Gabriel, not just any angel, the angel of the Lord. And he says, by the way, little lady, you're going to have the Messiah. That, that's pretty drastic. After nothing being said forever, you're hearing this from, from Gabriel. And so, so I love the fact that this is a lot of information. She's taking it in. I'm going to have the Messiah, Son of God. What? And, and, and so, the, so, so I love this in verse 34. How will this be 
since I'm a virgin. And I think this is so important. It's okay to ask God how. Whenever you hear something or you read something in Scripture and you go, you know, I know what I'm reading, but it doesn't really match up with my reality. It doesn't really match up with my experience. How, how are you going to do it? The difference between Zechariah's question on how and Mary's question and how, Zechariah basically said, prove to me you're going to do this. By what power are you going to do this? I, and it, it, it really, it's, it, it produced or it was proclaiming unbelief. Mary's going like, hey, how are you going to do this? Since I'm, I've never known a man. How? She was asking in faith, expecting an answer from Gabriel. It's not wrong to ask, Lord, I, I know what your worship is, but how? It, it's okay. You're not going to make God nervous with a how. And the answer you're going to get may, may very well be, trust me. And then your answer should be, got it. Because we walk in faith. This is the best faith walk we have. It's to trust him when it doesn't look right, it doesn't seem right. And we know his word is spoken and we go, based on your word, okay, I trust you. So she asked the question why or how. In verse 35, the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Number one, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason also, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Okay, now, we're talking about this stuff here, and, and we talk about the Holy Spirit, and we, and we talk about stuff like that. And you got to remember, this is all brand new conversation. I think that's a great question. Mary hears, number one, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. What is a Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? What? what what are you talking about, Holy Spirit? Remember when Paul came across disciples and, they, and he asked them, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? And they go, we, we don't even know if there is a Holy Spirit. Now, this is after, this is in chapter 19, I believe. Yeah, chapter 19. And this is after the Pentecost and the Holy Spirit and tongues. And there's still a group of people who are under John's baptism that don't know anything about it. We don't even know if there be a Holy Spirit. Y'all, for Mary to go, what? A Holy Spirit? What? So number one, that, that's major. What, what is the Holy Spirit? Whatever that Holy Spirit is, it's going to overshadow me. Oh, uh, a supernatural thing. So it's not, going to be, it's not going to be Joseph. It's not going to be a man thing. It's not going to be what I'm familiar with, what I understand. It's going to be absolutely supernatural, something beyond my reason. And usually God pushes that button quite often in our walk with God beyond your ability to comprehend it where you walk in faith. And the results will be, he'll be born ho a holy child. Okay, now holiness is attained through, through effort, and, and I have to earn holiness. You're saying this Holy Spirit is going to overshadow me, and the baby that's going to be born will be holy. Ha that, that's a foreign concept. We talk about holiness in a lot, but that's a foreign concept. Y'all, this is like a whole brand new language almost. And then he ends with, and he will be called the Son of God, the Messiah. And she's taking all this in. And, and so I think, you know, Gabriel just said all this stuff. And I'm thinking Mary's going, okay, what? <laughs> you have to put it in, in real life, everyday things. Get, get it off the, the, you know, TV version. I believe, no, I believe, no problem. No, 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 this is real stuff where you got to go, I, I don't quite get it, and it's okay to say that. And at the end of all of Gabriel says in verse 35 about how this is so dramatic, dr dramatic and drastic, and, then, and, then, and then, the, then verse 36, I love verse 36. I love this representative from heaven has come. Not any representative, Gabriel has come, has announced to Mary this amazing message of grace and life, and he gives them some really heavy explanation on the how. And this little girl's trying to figure it out, never understanding what the Holy Spirit is. This is all brand new conversation. And then I love that heaven doesn't leave her in the, just the wonder of it all. And, I, and I, 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 I think it's great that heaven, it doesn't bother heaven to give you a road sign in our walk with God. In our walk with God, when things start getting a little crazy or, or when, when you're really having to exert faith and you've heard a report and, 
and you've heard this and that, and, and then you're left with what, what God says about it, and you're left in that place like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. I love that the pattern we see from heaven is Luke 1.36. Let me, let me show you. It says, and behold. And means also. And everything I've talked to you about, there's an also. There's the continuation of all the supernatural, spiritual stuff I've laid out here, of all this incredible information I've given you about the Messiah and that you, little lady, are going to birth the Messiah. Of everything I've told you that's so just another world concept, I've got an also. Also behold, I love that, also behold. Also, also I want you to see something else is what Gabriel said. I want you to see it differently. He says this, and also behold, even your relative Elizabeth herself has conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called infertile is now in her sixth month. You have to ask the question, why would Gabriel, out of all the supernatural, Holy Spirit, who he is, what he's going to do, what, what his name will be, bring something natural? Because he knows us. God knows us. And I, I just want you, just for a moment, out of all the supernatural things you've experienced in your life, I want you to see that God actually met you with something you could handle so you could believe or something you couldn't. And I, and I think that's, that's okay. I think God will actually give you a sign that you can grasp and handle to be able to see the rest of it and believe for the rest of it. It says, and behold, Elizabeth, who your cousin is pregnant. She was, she was barren, remember? Oh, by the way, she's pregnant now in her sixth month. And verse 37, and Gabriel says, for nothing will be impossible with God, implying if Elizabeth, who was barren, is now pregnant, and that was from heaven, and I don't, can't give you all the details, but if you just trust me on this one, then nothing is impossible. Then everything I said to you is possible. If this natural road sign is there, then everything else is possible. Verse 38, and Mary said, Behold, <coughs> excuse me, and Mary said, Behold, the Lord bonds, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Yeah, we're recording live. Okay, here we go. And Mary said, Behold, the Lord's bond servant, may it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Y'all, that to me, I think that's the most amazing statement. Behold, the Lord's bond servant. Y'all, all of us should sometime in our prayer to be able to go, Behold, everything you said, I, I don't, it's hard to wrap my brain around, but I belong to you. I, I belong to you, all right? So I got that. I, I know that I belong to you. I'm your bond servant. May it be done to me according to your word. Okay. His word is eternal. Jesus is the word of God. There's a lot of stuff he said. I don't get it all, but I know I belong to you. So according to your word. Y'all, that's probably the best prayer that we could ever pray. When we're going through a situation and we don't know what's going on to say, you know what, God? I don't understand all this. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand COVID. I don't understand why this happened. I don't understand what's going on in my life. I don't understand what the report is, but I do belong to you. I know I, know I belong to you. And because I belong to you, let it be according to your word. And then he departs. And the very next verse, if you look at the story, Mary goes like, hey, thank you, Gabriel. I'm going to wait here and do nothing. Let it, let it be, unto, just, I'm going to just wait and just going to, hey, you know, however that thing is going to happen, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm here to be shattered over. I mean, we're, that's, not, that's not how the story goes. After he left, the next verse says, and she got on some kind of donkey or caravan or something, and she made her way to go see Elizabeth. I love that. That took so much faith. I'm going to go find out. I'm going to go see my cousin Elizabeth. So she travels 100 to 80, 80 to 100 miles to go see Elizabeth because the, the angel said, nothing's impossible. The angel said, your cousin's pregnant. So let's go rejoice with her. But I believe she was thinking, 
if she's pregnant, that's something I can see. That's something I, can't, I can put my hands on. That's something I can, I can understand. And if she's pregnant, then all this stuff that I don't get, you've got it. God, you've got this. So she goes in, and she makes her, and she walks in the door, and she says, Hello, Elizabeth. And she shouts the entrance. As she comes in and shouts her, her introduction, the baby within Elizabeth takes a flip and basically is, is, is filled with the Holy Spirit, which completes a prophecy that Gabriel presented to Zechariah in Luke 1.14, where it says, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. So all of a sudden, prophecy being fulfilled, Mary making this trek allows it to happen. And in the process of going from Nazareth to Judea, in that that effort of faith and her coming in and saying hello somewhere between that and then there and then she is overshadowed because elizabeth addresses her and says this baby leapt within me and that you're carrying the messiah when did she get pregnant she got pregnant when she acted in faith on something that was stated and what was stated was something natural that I could wrap my brain about around. Y'all, God is speaking a lot of great things to you. And, and in the process, like for instance, let's say, let's say finances. He says, man, and you're going to have money and it's going to be great. You're going to be wealthy. And you go, man, that's awesome. So what should I do? Get up and go to work. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, 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 no. I'm expecting to be overshadowed or something. No, get up and do what you can do. Put effort on what you can see. And as you activate faith in what you can see, what you can't see will be brought to you because you're walking in faith and the faith that you have. Remember, when God looked at Moses, he said, let me see, what do you have in your hand? Can I, let me, I can use that. And God is longing to use what you have in your hand. So you have to activate something to get the next process started. And it's not works, it's faith. So she goes, and, and Elizabeth says, blessed are you, which means to be spoken well of. And then verse 145, Luke 145 says this. This is so cool. And blessed, or well off, or happy. Blessed, well off, or happy is he who, who believed, which means Mary, because you believed. And that means believe means to put credit on or to trust. Blessed are you, or happy is, are you, Mary, who believed, who put trust, you, you credited to the Lord, that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. Blessed are you, Mary, because you trusted God and you got on a donkey and traveled 80 to 100 miles to see what the Lord had spoken to, to see it being fulfilled. And this is really important, y'all. Look at the verse again. And blessed, means well off or happy, is, he, is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment. This word fulfillment in the Greek means a verification. I think that's amazing. God wasn't upset with her because she went to go see if Elizabeth was pregnant. God said, you need the verification. Go get to it, girl. Get on that donkey. Move on. That's faith in action. Put some action to what you believe, and it will be a verification that the rest of it's coming. We live every day in faith. You live every day in faith. And sometimes he speaks to you things you can't comprehend. And the best thing you can do is keep doing what you've been doing. Or at least put action to something you can wrap your hand around. If he's called you to, to be a wealthy individual, then get busy being diligent at what you're doing now. If he's called you to be a man of peace, then try being peaceful with those around you right now. Instead of waiting, well, someday, I'm, or whatever you think it might be, get action. Put action to it of what you can do, what you can see, and what you can't, God will bring to you. I think living, in t starting this church back in the day and believing like I've never believed before, before and experienced things I've never experienced before, well, it's an incredible journey. I believe this, the fact that the church right now, the bridge, is on our 28 acres. This is... This building, th this whole property that we bought was a road sign. And I believe the property being purchased 
was Elizabeth is pregnant. I think the, the, the church being here now is Elizabeth is pregnant. It's what I can see. It's what I, I can wrap my brain around. Does that mean that Sereno, the, the whole idea of this whole complex, it's coming. Why? Because this is my Elizabeth. Every one of you have an Elizabeth within your grasp that, that, that says, if I've got this, then I know the rest is taken care of. I ne you need to look for that, y'all. You need to, in whatever has been stated, to have that Elizabeth moment and put action to something to verify. And I think it's ordained by God to do so. Look what she said. Blessed, happy are you because you trusted God. That you would be that you would uh, would be a fulfillment that it would be a fulfillment a verification of what had been spoken, and after this is and Mary treasured these things in her heart. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that that means that she contemplated, went it over, went over and over what God had said, what what the the, the angel has said, what the what what what's going to be said by the shepherds, and when the baby's born, and then thirty some odd years later, she ponders and says, "Hey." Whatever he says, do it, because that's what she did. Whatever he said, I did. Let it be unto me according to your word. I encourage you this Christmas season. There are things around you that have been spoken. There are things around you about your life that God has spoken. And you're kind of waiting like in limbo instead of activating what you can do. Mary got on a donkey and activated her faith, and somewhere within the action of her faith, she became pregnant in, in putting to work what she heard. I encourage you, stop, get a, get a place, take some time, and say, God, you've spoken a lot of these things to me. Now, what, what is it that I can see? Remember, Gabriel said, oh, by the way, behold. Oh, by the way, I want you to see something. And I believe God is saying that to you. I want you to see something. And I think he's talking to you about specifically your Elizabeth to see. So it's my prayer that this next year we're about to get into, next week I'll be sharing about the vision of the church for 2022. And I'm really excited about it. And it's kind of a springboard of this idea of activating what God has spoken to you. So um, I just feel like you need to take a minute, take a time and, and think through this is what I said by the Holy Spirit and look for the next step. Look for that, that thing you can do instead of focusing on what you can't. Because God looks at you that way. He doesn't see you without. He sees you complete. So maybe it's important that you see things in your own life complete as well. Let's pray. Now, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you it's been given in peace and life. I thank you, God, that you are the source behind all that we are and all that we do. And God, this is about you being glorified in this whole uh, life cycle that you've given to us. I thank you, God, that we have an opportunity to see something absolutely spectacular in our life. And the way you speak in your word about things are so incredible, God, but you also know humanity and you also know us, that we need something of a road sign that we can see. And there's a road sign right there. If everyone, would, if you just would stop. And we thank you, God, that we, we stop and look and listen. We love you and we thank you that you are our Father and we belong to you. I want to share the tiffa before I close here. It says a tiffa for this week. Try it for a week. And someone said, Orlando, we should be trying for a lifetime. Well, you, you didn't get, every bad situation didn't, tr didn't start overnight. It starts with time. So if you can try this for a week and then next week try the next thing for a week, then who knows, maybe in a couple of months it'll all different the idea is to keep doing something different and expecting great god uh, god to do great things in you the tiffa try it for a week i agree with heaven that nothing is impossible with god i trust you to fulfill what you have spoken so let it be according to your word in my life this is a great way of closing out 2021 and starting 2022 i'm going to say it again i agree with heaven that there's nothing that nothing is impossible with God. I trust you to fulfill what you have spoken, so let it be according to your word in my life. That's a good place to start, y'all. Receive that this week. It's been our custom to do communion together. If you want to get prepared, go in there. Maybe uh, get your juice, whatever you have available. Maybe some wassail. I don't know. 
what anyone wants to is. Anyway, so, uh, and, and, and get the bread ready. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. The reason he said, do this in remembrance of me is because he knew his people, he knew humanity, that we'd be, we would, we'd be so easily distracted by what we see and what we experience that we would lose faith. And he said, do this in remembrance of what I've done and do this in remembrance of who you belong to. That's why it's so important for us to remember who we belong to. And Jesus gave us this wonderful opportunity to remember him. So if you lift the bread up to the Lord right now, now, Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, and we thank you, God, for this wonderful gift, the wonderful gift of your Son and redemption that's found in him. He was beaten, and he bore stripes on his back, the whippings on his back, and that by those stripes, we can expect fully paid for healing in our body. It's what you died for us to have. And therefore, God, the enemy is a liar, and we remind ourselves that we are the healed of the Lord. And from the common cold to COVID and to cancer as well, in the name of Jesus, we remind our body that we belong to you and you paid for this for us to walk in healing. Let's all take together now. Let's lift the cup up to the Lord. Now, God, because you do all things so well, you leave nothing undone. You provided a way for us to be completely healed and live in abundance here on earth, but you also provided a way for us to be eternal, to be eternal creatures of life with you. And God, we thank you for the cup of our sin that you took, that we could take this cup of redemption and that we could be forever in fellowship with you, sons and daughters, heirs of the kingdom. We remind ourselves that we belong to you. Let's all take together. Now, just where you are there at the house, lift up your hands to the Father. It's all been our custom to do this together. This is a, a form of worship before the Lord. The word is yada, and the word means to lift up your hands and cast away. So when you're in praise and worship and you lift up your hands, you're actually saying, God, I lift up my hands and I cast away whatever identity that is not of you that's been trying to come upon me. Whatever identity the enemy's been trying to put upon me, I cast that away. It also is a word for confession. So when you lift up your hands, you're saying, God, I know not only cast away the identity of the, of the enemy upon my life, but I, I also proclaim and confess what you say about me, that I'm healed, delivered, and an heir of the kingdom. That is who I am, and I confess that in Jesus' name, amen. It's been great to be with you today. Um, my prayer is that you enjoy the rest of the Christmas holidays and get ready for New Year. It's going to be, the New Year is, is going to be awesome. Uh, we have a great message. I'm really excited about the first Sunday of the month. Make plans to be with us. We love you, and we'll see you in the new year.